my name is Hans Christian Ring and I am a doctor at the Department of Dermatology at Peace Prepare Hospital and I have been given the honor of answering a few questions on a just recently published paper the role to biologics in patients with hydrodenitis subjunctiva a nationwide drug utilization study and the first question is why did we do this study well so far data on real world systemic hs therapies prior to use of biologics are relatively lacking so we therefore examined the patterns and quantity of systemic treatment regimens in HS patients prior to use of biologic therapy in the Danish national healthcare system and whether observed real-world clinical practice to follow the international recommendations for HS management. So how did we do it? We identified all HS patients receiving treatment with biologics in the Danish national patient registry from 2010 through 2018 and extracted their entire prescription history of specific systemic treatments from the Danish National Prescription Registry since its inception in 1995. And what were our main findings? A total of 225 HS patients were included. The patients had most frequently been treated with penicillin, diclosacillin, tritocycline, and combination therapy of uh, rifampicin, clindamycin, uh, but also uh, IC tretinoin and dapsone. Prior to biologic therapy, patients received a mean of 4.0 different systemic therapies across a mean of 16.9 different treatment series. In the mean time from first systemic therapy until biologic therapy wa was initiated was 15.3 years. And when excluding penicillin and diclosacillin, it was around eight years. So why is this study relevant to dermatologists and patients? We believe our study highlight an important issue in, uh, in HS as our data showed that HS patients on average were treated with systemic therapies for eight years before starting biologic therapy. The large number of systemic treatment series used prior uh, to initiation, initiation of biologics may somehow reflect referral delays or difficulties in obtaining disease control in patients with moderate to severe HS. So our data emphasized the need for optimized implementation of evidence-based guidelines to harmonize treatment strategies, as well as the need to develop and license additional effective therapies for treatment of HS.